How did they tell time? Well, before we had watches and digital devices to help us. Well, your students might say we used hourglasses with some sand, day and night, but hopefully they'll mention the sun. And that's what we're going to do today. We're going to create a device that uses the sun to tell the time. So our sundial over here, as you can see, has a vertical and a horizontal axis. At the top, we have 12 o'clock, just like a standard clock. And at the bottom here, on our horizontal axis, it's going to be 6 a.m. and 6 p.m. Now, the one item that you want to be careful here is that that 12 o'clock axis has to be pointing to the north when you set it up outside. We'll use a compass to do that. Now, once you've created the base of your sundial, you want to create that triangular piece that projects the shadow onto your sundial. That's called a gnomon. For that, you're going to need a protractor. You're going to measure the angle of latitude where you are located. We're currently 44 degrees north, about. And so we want to calculate that, and we're going to cut that angle on our, on our gnomon at 44 degrees. Once you've put that together, you want to tape that to your sundial uh, directly sticking out, and we can go use it outside. Let's see what happens. Now that we have our sundial set up outside, we've used our compass here so that we can make sure that it's pointed north with our vertical axis here. With my pencil, I'm going to make a marking with the shadow here that's displayed and projected by our gnomon. And using our watch here, we can tell what time it is. We'll make a mark. We want to try to come out roughly every hour so we can tell where we're going to put the lines for each of those hours on our clock. After you mark the gnomon shadow for each of the hours, your sundial should look something like this. Now remember, as a result of the Earth's motions, some of these shadows may shift over time. You might have to recalibrate in weeks and months to come. When examining the components of the solar system, a fun way to explore the idea of scale uses a roll of toilet paper, uh, some index cards, and the great outdoors. Now using Bode's law to calculate the distances between planets and the sun, we've got a pared down table here uh, that uses these toilet paper squares to represent the distances uh, between the planets. Now this is also appended to the website for, uh, for future reference as well. So once you uh, make it outside, you want to have your students write the name of the sun and the planets on these index cards. And when they roll out the toilet paper roll outside, you can have them placed at the appropriate distances. So I think Mercury is about four squares away from the Sun. And you could use some uh, playground balls also to represent the planets if you wish. And once you have it all the way rolled out, maybe you'll make it to Neptune because a roll of, of toilet paper is usually about 300 squares. So you won't make it to Pluto, that's another 100 squares. You can approximate that. Um, have your students stand where these index cards are and they'll get an idea of the real scale of the solar system and those distances between the, uh, the planets. And you can ask them questions such as, um, are the planets evenly spaced within the solar system? And where are most of those planets located? And what are the characteristics of those planets versus the other ones that are maybe further away? way to make a telescope with your class uses two magnifying glasses, one a little bit larger than the other, two tubes, in this case from uh, paper towel rolls, and some tape. Have your students take the larger of the two magnifying glasses and sort of point it down to a sheet of paper until it's focused. Use the second one, which will be their eyepiece, a little bit smaller magnifying glass, and move it between them and the other magnifying glass till they see a clear image. Now the distance between the two magnifying glasses will roughly be the length of their telescope. Once they've done that, they can take one of the two tubes and cut it at length so it overlaps over itself and then they can fit it in the other tube. Take one of the magnifying glasses, tape it to one end around the outside so that they can clearly see through it and the same on the other side. Once they've done this, they can zoom in and out until the image is at focus, a clear image, which will be upside down. And they've then created a simple refracting telescope, much the same as Galileo did over 400 years ago.
If you have access to computers at your school or the internet in your classroom, a really fascinating program to use with your students is called Google Sky. This is a component of Google Earth and it allows you to view the Earth from different perspectives in space and you can explore its rotation, its revolution. You can also look at uh, different objects within the solar system up close and in greater detail. It gives you good information about that. Let's go take a look. Both Google Earth and YouTube host multiple uh, tutorials that show you the functions and features of Google Sky. Here we see the projection uh, on uh, the Earth of the Sun. If we go to Google Sky here, we can explore constellations and different objects within our solar system. We can zoom into the Moon and explore the phases of the Moon in this way as well. If we go to Google Mars, we can explore some of the features on this planet. On the top left side you can type in different features that you want to see. In this case we're looking at Olympus Mons uh, and we can view articles about this feature and uh, see uh, uh, different pictures of it as well as other features on the planet. So these are particularly useful when uh, you're doing research projects with your students and uh, they want to gather some information and pictures about uh, these planets or, or objects. Now, if you just have a web browser and aren't able to download the program, you can just type in Google Sky into your web browser and it'll bring you to the program online. And so here we can see different planets and different objects uh, from the space telescopes and things of this nature. You can also type in Google Moon, which will bring you to uh, a site that has similar information just for the moon. So we can visit different sites uh, that the Apollo missions landed. Uh, and uh, view different information about these as well. Now we've talked about a number of concepts relating to space, but it almost wouldn't be fair if we didn't launch a rocket before we moved on to another unit. So let's do that outside. Remember though that most other rocket activities are covered in other strands. While we're discussing the theme of rockets, and if you happen to have some tubing around and an old 2 liter plastic bottle here, attach that to one end and with a 90 degree elbow, you can attach another end of piping to this side here. This part will go on the ground and when you stomp on that plastic bottle, the air will come right through the piping and it will shoot out this end. So that's where you can make some rockets out of paper with your classroom. They put it over top and it will just shoot right out when you stomp on that plastic bottle. Well, that about wraps up our brief look at the space unit in grade 6. We've taken a look at most of the basic concepts. Uh, some of the remaining items will include uh, discussions about the evolution of our solar system, a uh, more detailed look at each of the objects within it, uh, and likely a, a chat about uh, space exploration, where it's gone and where it might go. So have fun with that, and we'll see you soon. Thank you.